Keith loves the crisp autumn air. And with the temperatures cooling, Canadians will start covering their barbecues and firing up their furnaces and fireplaces. Keith knows that Alberta has a lot of natural gas. And, like most Albertans, he relies on it to keep his family warm during the cooler months. Keith wonders, how is natural gas extracted and is it safe? He is about to have a conversation with Michelle, who works for the AER as a geologist or a rock expert. It's so nice to warm up and enjoy a conversation that really matters. Michelle tells Keith that most of our natural gas is extracted using a technique called hydraulic fracturing or fracking. Keith has heard concerns about hydraulic fracturing and asks, if hydraulic fracturing is so controversial, why do we even allow it? Michelle points out that hydraulic fracturing has been used in Alberta since the 1950s and more than 100,000 wells have been drilled using the technique. In fact, hydraulic fracturing is now the standard approach used to extract natural gas in Alberta. And that's because almost all of the easy-to-get natural gas has been drilled in Alberta. But recent innovations in drilling and hydraulic fracturing techniques have unlocked new and vast oil and gas resources that would otherwise be trapped deeper underground. Keith wonders how hydraulic fracturing actually works. Michelle tells Keith that both vertical and horizontal wells can be hydraulically fractured. However, horizontal wells are often used to reduce the footprint at the surface and are more efficient. For example, an operator can use this method to replace eight vertical wells with one horizontal one and drill from a single place. Horizontal wells are drilled thousands of meters below the surface and far beyond groundwater before turning horizontally and continuing on for another one and a half kilometers or even more. Once the well is drilled, fluids are pumped into the well to create enough pressure deep underground to crack the rock, allowing the oil or gas to flow. The fluids usually have a propant, like sand, that helps keep the cracks open to allow the oil and gas to flow to the well. The fracturing that takes place at multiple locations along the horizontal wells is called multi-stage fracturing. Keith has heard a lot about fracturing fluid and wonders what it is and what's in it. Michelle tells Keith that the fluid an operator uses depends on factors such as depth and location of the well, and the kind of rock that holds the oil and gas. For example, water-based fluids are used to recover gas from a rock called shale. Chemicals can be added to the water to make it more slippery. Because of this, the fluid can be pumped down faster and under less pressure. Keith wants to know what's in these fluids. Michelle tells him he's not alone in asking about them. That's why the AER requires operators to report the types and amounts of chemicals they used, along with how much water was needed and where they got it from, for every hydraulic fracturing job. She tells him he can find the information on the web at fracfocus.ca. Michelle wants Keith to know that the AER regulates hydraulic fracturing to make sure the public is safe and the environment is protected. If a company wants to drill, they start the process by leasing the mineral rights from the Alberta government. Then, the company drafts their project plans while consulting with stakeholders, allowing their concerns to potentially influence the design. After listening to the communities and completing complex site and project assessments, the company must submit a detailed application to the AER. The AER then reviews the project, which can take several months to complete and sometimes involves public hearings. If the AER determines that all application requirements have been met, it will issue an approval or an approval with conditions. And their job doesn't end there. Once the project starts, the AER will carry out inspections during construction and operation 
to make sure all the rules are followed. If problems are found, the AER takes action to enforce the rules in a variety of ways. Consequences for breaking them can be very serious and include conducting more frequent inspections, issuing large fines, carrying out prosecutions, or even shutting in operations. Keith says that he has more questions about hydraulic fracturing, like, does it cause earthquakes, pollute our water, and create noise and dust, and is the AER doing anything to address these concerns? Michelle tells Keith that all energy development, like any other industrial activity, has impacts, and the AER has rules in place to manage them. She'd be happy to answer his questions, if he has a few more minutes to spare. For more conversations that matter, click on one of the links below or check out the Alberta Energy Regulator at aer.ca.